they got us, they got us under their chain. Just like a dog that, like, you get that little invisible fence <laughs> on your yard, and that dog go and get shot. After a while, that dog, like, you know what? I ain't getting shot no more, so I'm not even gonna go there. I'm not even gonna go close to them. Yeah. So that's why we don't have yokes of iron. Because those yokes of iron was on our necks and on us to keep us captive. Because go to the next slide. The next slide got the one got the bells. So you see these brass bells. These are the yokes of iron that's on our neck. But the reason that they said them yokes of iron are off our neck, we ain't going, we ain't going nowhere. We ain't doing nothing. I, we gonna fight tooth and nail to protect the so-called white man. But with each other, we just, we up a gun and shoot shoot our brother in the street dead with no problem. Our brother drive past us, we mean mugging him. What you looking at? That's how that's how we we've been destroyed. They destroyed us. That's why we not walking. That's why we don't have the yokes of iron on our neck no more because we destroyed. We hate each other and love them. Next slide. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64. Read and, loud. and the Lord shall scatter thee amongst all people from one end of the earth into the other. And there shall and there thou shalt serve other gods, which were thou nor their fathers had known, even wood and stone. So basically, no matter where you go on this earth, we're there. Because the most high God scattered us among all people. All the nations on the earth, we there. We there, and we there. Ain't no, ain't no other way to say it. But we there, and we serve the other God. Christianity, is the, it says, uh, God, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. The, most two, the two most predominant religions on the earth is Christianity and Islam. And those are the main, the main two religions that we flock to as a people. We go to Christianity because they got a feel-good message. And then we go to Islam or NOI because they, 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 they say that, uh, they say, they basically supposed to be a black man's religion. The, the, you know, the nation of Islam, not widespread Muslim or Islam. But, we, but and then also, these were our main slave masters. When you look at it, when you look at Christianity, that's your conquistadors, your Spaniards. They came over here with the Catholic, with the Catholic cross, with the Catholicism. That's why most, a lot of the Hispanics are Catholic. And when you look at the stone. When you go back a little bit further, you have, is it on the next slide? Is that the Catalan Atlas? Yeah. When you go to wood and the stone, that's Islam, because we were also in slavery under the Arabs. And, and, that's the sub-Saharan slave trade. That, that's okay. another thing that gets to me. When they call them Arabs, aren't they actually Africans? No. Uh, well, what continent are they from? The Arabs are that's Saudi Arabia. So Saudi I mean, Arabia is Africa. That's North East Africa. That's Africa. <laughs> but they're not African. But they do. But I'm gonna tell you, I had, when I when I found out where my family was from, the guy. Well, I was in a store in a Boost Mobile store, and he stood up. He said, "Well, you know, we is cousins." I said, "Well, we what?" I said, "I thought you was the Arab." She okay, said, so I, "I am." So. He said, but we're from Africa. So that's where there's a disconnect. That's, yeah. Because we're not African. The Israelites are not African. I know, but we're from the continent of Africa, though. Africa is, because had, Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Mm -hmm. We come, we under the lineage of Shem. The Arabs are also under the lineage of Shem. But the Africans are from the lineage of Ham. So we're not the same. We don't. We're so not the same. you gonna tell me since um, um, my family is from West Africa, and yes. I was told by African woman, if you're, if you're 
if you have any African in your blood, you're kin to all of them. That's what this man was trying to tell no, me. So he said, we are kin folks. So this, let, no, get, so hold that. Read that first, read that first. This, book, this is the book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem, yes. and I'm reading this because it's widely said that Africa is the motherland. Yeah. And that's not true. What? Read it. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. So it says Jerusalem, which is above. What it's saying when it says above, Jerusalem is above all the other land masses, nations on the earth. Jerusalem is. Read. Which is the mother of us all. Jerusalem is the motherland. Jerusalem is the garden of Eden. So where, right, and where is Jude the garden of Eden? Huh? Where is the garden of Eden? It's in Jerusalem. Well, where is Jerusalem? That's mm -hmm. what I'm it's, saying. Where it's is North, it? It's in North, eight, Northeast Africa. In but Africa. But Jerusalem is the motherland. The but thing it's is, still Africa. We can't That's say that we're Africa. Because we're not African. That's the, the thing is, we cannot say it's two well, different well, things. My, my family, Exodus 11 and 7. My family has Cameroon in them. The they Cuba, have Ghana in them. You know who they are? The yeah. Ghanaians? Who are yeah. they? Who are they? Yeah, my family. No, I'm saying the Ghanaians, the Cameroon. Who are they? The Na Nigerians. I'm Nigerians. kidding all these people. But who are they? The are they Africans? They are Because they live on the land mass of Africa. They or what? are they Israelites living in Africa? It's oh. a difference. Just like we're Israelite, you say you know you're Israelite. Yeah. We're Israelites and we're living in America. Well, but they came from Africa though. Still. That don't mean that that's where they're it from. But I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna connect us, the dots. They took my family I'm, from Africa. No, but I understand what you're saying. I'm gonna connect the dots for okay. you so that you can understand what I'm trying to say. Read that real quick. This is the book of Exodus, chapter eleven, verse seven. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. So I want to read this first. It says, against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. A dog is talking about the other nations. This is, this is like an allegory. This is the most high, uh, what's the word? This is, this is the most high uh, with, his, with his humor. He said, not, shall not a dog move his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Read, I meaning the other nations can't speak against us. And they stick, read. Against man or beast. Uh huh. Against us or our beast. Read. That ye may know how the Lord doth doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. What what nation was the Egyptians? Egyptians was in uh, Europe. It's supposed to have been in Europe, but could have been Africa. No, nah, Egypt Egypt is in northern Africa. So each the Egyptians are Africans. Yeah. Or Hermetic or Kemetic. That's Egyptians right. are Hamites. That's why or Moses Africans. was able to be an Egyptian. And the Bible says that the Most High set a difference between the Africans and the Israelites. We're two different people. We have the same skin complexion, but we are two different people, we're not the same people. Now go to Matthew chapter twenty four. Because what happened, we 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 favor Africa, where we can go, the thing about it is, when you think about Christ, Christ was told, Joseph was told to go to Egypt mm -hmm. when Herod was trying to kill him. Why do you think that Joseph was told to go to Egypt? Because we know Joseph was an Israelite because he, he yeah. Christ's father. He, he was told to go to Egypt. Why? Because he blended in. And that's the same thing. We were in we were in Africa. That's how you know it's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. This is the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, when know, then know that the desolation thereof is high. So it says, when we see Jerusalem compassed about with armies, that's when that's talking about the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. Read. Then let them which are in the Judea flee to the mountains. So it says, when, that, when, when this happens, let them that are in Judea flee to the mountains. It's talking about Africa. Okay. Read. And let them which are in the midst of, of it depart out. Uh huh. And let not them that are in the countries and enter thereinto. So during this time, those mountains, we flew into the mountains of Africa. 
Why? Because the same way he told the Joseph to take Christ to Egypt mm -hmm. to hide, it's the same thing that happened to us. We, we fled into Africa. Of course, it started the northern part of Africa, and over time, we just migrated farther south, and we was living amongst the Africans. Get that in um, Joel. So that's how they get together and bring us to America. They knew who we were. The Africans they knew. The, we knew we wasn't African, and the Africans knew we wasn't African. Yeah. And the thing about it is, like we 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 reading about the Arab. The Arabs had us in slavery. But we're gonna read. We're gonna read, further read the Bible to get a clearer picture because we're not African. The, in Ghana, we got it's Israelites that's living there. I know. In Cameroon, in Nigeria, in South Africa, all over, it's, it's Israelites living amongst Africans. And they know the difference. We don't. A lot of times, we just, we've been, we've been so beat down that we just, hey, I'm anything that's, that that sound better than what I'm going through right now. And that's where we, that's where the understanding and the, that's what we really got to get that understanding and learn who we actually are and, and, and level it out. Because the real Africans that know they Africans and know that we're the Israelites, you see the, you see, you see the cold shoulder that we get when we, oh, when we go amongst them. They're they going to let you know that, no, I don't shoulder. like you. Get out of here. I haven't been getting the cold shoulder. I have to not, and I will walk up to them and speak on it. That's like that lady told me. She's from Nigeria, mm -hmm. and she said that any African, anybody to say they from Africa, I came to everybody in Africa. And it has nothing to do about where you come from in Africa. Mm -hmm. So I might be an Israelite. This might be my African next door neighbor. But just like you said, I wouldn't know the difference. You would know the difference, but that's a, that's a deep. But difference. let's read this because it's two with two different Africans. All Africans are not Israelites, just like all Israelites are not Africans. Fine, I agree. And that's where it is a distinguishing line. We're scattered amongst them, but we're not African. Read that. This is the book of Joel, chapter three, verse one. For behold, in those days. And in, the, in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. Uh huh. Still talking. We're going back to it again. There's another prophet where he's talking about the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, the northern and southern kingdom. Read. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is the valley of judgment. This is just referring to judgment day. Read. And will plead with them for my people, for my heritage Israel. So it says this this is when the Most High gonna plead for his nation. And when the Most High plead it ain't, oh you know what, please give me my nation back. Give me my people back. No, this is talking about judgment and destruction and death. He's coming and putting people to death. That's what it's talking about. Read. Whom whom they have scattered among the nations. Because the nations have scattered us amongst the other nations, read. And parted my land. And they parted our land. They're living in our land as if it's theirs. You have the, the, uh, the Israelis and the Palestinians, excuse me, fake Jews and the Arabs in our land. Read. And they have cast lots for my people, uh -huh. and have given a boy for an harlot, and sold a girl for wine. So it says they given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine. That's what they did to us in slavery. They were selling us for for wine and, and, and drinks and and orgies and whores, the men and the women. That's what you call buck breaking. That's what they was doing to us. Read. That they might drink. Uh-huh. Yea. Yeah. And what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? So the Most High said, what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Those are two African nations or Hermetic nations. <clears throat> Read. And all the coast of the Philistines. And all the coast of Palestine. That's talking about the Arabians. Read. Will you render me a recompense? It says, will you render me a recompense? This is the most high God saying, okay, by taking my people to slavery, that's how you that's how you repay me because I didn't choose you. This is what he's saying to the Arabs and to the Africans. Oh, since I didn't choose you, you're taking my people into slavery. 
Read. And if you if and if you compen, uh, recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? And the most I got saying, hey, okay, so you you paying me back? All right, cool. Quickly, I'm gonna judge you because you think you you think you paying me back by taking my people. Read. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold, uh -huh. and have carried into the temples of the goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem. It says the children of Judah and Jerusalem, again, that's the northern and southern kingdom. What they do? Have ye sold unto the Grecians? Have ye sold unto the Grecians? Who are the Grecians? Greeks. And who are the Greeks? Europeans. Caucasians, white men. That's what I was so talking the about. Act, so it's saying that when, when we were sold on the west coast of Africa, mm -hmm. those were Africans selling no, us not. to the yeah. white man, not Africans selling Africans. Right. Yeah. They knew that we were different from them. We don't get Babylon and Timber to it, do we? But they knew that we were different. Because like I, like, like I said earlier, and I'm going to actually read it. Go to Deuteronomy 7 and 6 real quick. Because, like, even, even today, we are, we are at the bottom no matter where you go. But even with us being at the bottom, we excel, every, anything that we, we put our mind to, we excel uh, far beyond anybody else. We are basketball. We are football. If you take us out, ain't nobody going to want to watch it. We the entertainment. But that go they, and that circles right back to us being slaves. They put they put us in those positions so we can be their entertainment. That's the only reason they pay big bucks because you, we just seen it over the course of the last year. Kyrie Irving. Uh, who else? Kanye West. Kanye West. What was the one that football player from a couple with the fro? What, what was his name? Nick uh, Colin Kaepernick. Uh, Colin Kaepernick, when he uh, kneeled. So the minute they go against the league or America, they strip, they, oh no, you breached your contract. They cut the money off. That lets you know that we still slaves. We, we under their control. Read that. <clears throat> this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Most High God said that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are a holy people unto the Lord God. Read. The Lord thy God has chosen thee. And he's chosen us. Read. To be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. He chose us above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So we, even in our, even in our lowest state, we still excel everybody. Get that in, uh... Is that Psalms 133? Or is it sing, uh, sing uh, the songs of Babylon or Zion? Or Psalms 137. 137. 137. Yeah, Psalms 137. Read that real quick. This is the entertainment industry in a nutshell. It's wonderful. Because when you, when you want to talk about singing, can't nobody do it like we do. Basketball, football, soccer, anything. I know. Even, if, it, even if it's so education. You give us the right education, and, and we're 400 years behind, and we still, we still about 400 years. We behind, and we still excel. When we exposed to the information, we excel. That's because we are we are the guys on this earth. We are the we are the original. We are the people that that's supposed to be ruling. But because we broke God's commandments, we're not ruling, and now we got to suffer that, knowing that how did we we and it it, it just Mentally, it bothers us. Like, how is it that I'm serving these people and they are obviously weaker than me? They're obviously weak as a nation. They're obviously inferior and weaker, but yet they're over us. And that bothers us. Whether we whether we doing right or we doing wrong, that bothers us. Like, how is this even possible? But it's possible because it's bigger than us. Because if it if it was if it was not a spiritual thing, we can easily come together and take over the world. But because it's a spiritual punishment, it's the Most High God that got His hand on us. It's the Most High God that's using the nations as our belt 
ain't nothing we can do about it. All we can do is look like how, 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 like how is it even possible that these they inferior? You can see it, but they over us. They rule over us. It's because the Most High God is trying to get our attention and let us know, ain't nothing you can. The only thing you can do to correct it is start go back to my law, go back to my commandments, and start keeping. It. And then I'm gonna step back up and fight for you and make things happen for you. But until then, we're going to still see our young men getting shot in the streets. We're going to still see young babies getting shot through windows. We're going to still see all these things until we get right as a nation. Because when we get right as a nation, then we're going to get back to where we need to be. Read that. 137 verse 1. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we so it went. Says, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. That's talking about our captivity, us being in slavery. Babylon, America is Babylon. Yeah. Modern day Babylon. Because of the captivity we the read. There we sat down. They kept us dumb. Yeah, they kept us dumb. They took our Bible away from us. They didn't allow us to read. They didn't allow us to do none of that. Just go work in, just go work in the field, nigga. That's all you get. That's all you can do. Until they destroyed us. Until they wiped off, they wiped us out. Yeah. Generation after generation. We were further away from the, the Bible, and then, oh yeah, you can read, because they, they destroyed us. We read the Bible, and we're only going to see, and that, that's, the, that's the, 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 the damage, that's the destroyed. Because now, even with us, the things that we're showing right now, I can ask, are these things that we've been reading out the Bible, do it relate to us? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it relates to us. You can't, you can't refute it. But a lot of our people will see these things and say, oh, well, what about the white man? What about his salvation? Is he going to be saved? And, this, and the thing about it is the reason our people divert to that is because we've been destroyed. We've been beat down in our, in, in our minds. The white man is God. So if, if, if he's God and you telling me that this Bible is about me, what about my God? I can't bring my God with me. That's, that's what goes on. But what we're trying to say is the white man ain't God. Christ is not a white man. Christ is a black man. Yeah, he was. So read that. I don't want to go that. too far. I'm already. Mm -hmm. Read that. We hanged our harps upon the willows of the midst thereof. Mm -hmm. For there they were carry us away captive required of us. A song. Because it said, they carried us away captive, they required of us a song or entertainment. Read. And they that wasted us required us mirth, uh -huh. saying, Sing us one of those Zion, songs of Zion. Read that again. Sing us one of those songs of Zion. Uh -huh. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? So they just. Reason I'm reading, reading this, that's the entertainment field. The singing, the dancing, the sports, that's what it is. Hey, hey nigga, go, go, sing, go sing us a song. Hey nigga, hey, bounce that ball and entertain me. Run, run, that, run, the, run that football field, catch the, what is it called? The kickoff catch, what is it? Kick return. Kick return. Hey, run from run from run one at what's a hundred yard field. Yeah. Run that and dip and dodge and do. That's what that is. Entertain us. A mirth. Uh, make us laugh. Yeah, make us laugh. The comedians. Yeah. The top. Every no matter what, no matter what you highlight from entertainment, from the com comedians, all of that. We are the top. We are the, uh, the cream of the crop. Yeah. But we the cream of the crop, but we at the bottom. The bottom the so that, that got to, that's something that as we see these things, like we, the first scripture we read was Isaiah 1 and 3. We got to consider if if we excel in everything, we are obviously the greater people. Why is it that we at the bottom? We at the bottom because of uh, 
Acts 3 and 19. We at the bottom because we broke God's commandments. Only way, only, the only way to reverse those effects is for us to repent and return to God. Return to keeping his commandments. Read that. There's the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted. So the Bible says repent, meaning you feel remorse for the wrong that you've done, and you turn away from it. Read. That your sins may be blotted out. And when we do that, the Most High God is going to forgive us. He's going to forgive us for our sin, but we got to repent. We got to see, man, I've been eating pork all these years. I didn't know that was going against you. I, ah, man, I, you, you fall to your knees, feel bad. And you stop doing it, and you find out what you're supposed to do. And do it. Read. When the times of the refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. All right, you read that too fast. So I'll start from the top. I missed something. Repent ye therefore, and be, and be converted. So it says, repent, so feel remorse for your sins, and stop doing it. And then it says, and be converted. To convert means change. Get Psalm 19 and 7. So if you repent, you feel remorse, man, I don't want to do that no more. What do I got to do? What, what do I got to do correct to correct this? So he's telling us, follow the 10, excuse me, follow the 10 commandments it's that not just I gave 10. you. It's not just the 10, it's more than 10. I mean, but you know. I know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying. Right. And, and, and do things my way. Exactly. All the lies, if you know, this, it's, it's a lot of lies yeah. that was told to us. Right. So. And that's 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 why that's why we're here. I'm thinking. Read. So it says, repent ye therefore and be converted. Meaning, feel remorse for the wrong that you've done against God. Stop doing it. Turn away from it and be changed by what? Read. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. Uh -huh. So it says the law of the Lord is perfect. The laws of God, this Bible that we have, is perfect. Ain't no flaws in it. If you find there's some flaws in it, that means you're confused. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making the wise simple. So it says, the, read it again from the top. Read that first part. The law of the Lord is perfect. So the laws of God are perfect. Read. Converting the soul. And it, it's what converts our soul. The laws of God is what, is what changes us. So we got to go back to, okay, I feel bad, so what I, what's next? What I got to do? Go to uh, Deuteronomy 20, 25. Actually read First, first Timothy oh man, 2. Yeah, 2. Modern, modern Spirit. Modern Spirit. So I'm going to start with, no, you know what? I'm sorry. Start with the men. 1 Corinthians 11. Okay. So I'm gonna just go over because we running short on time and go over a few, a couple of laws. Um, just to show, okay, we understand that all of these bad things are happening to us because we broke God's commandments. So the solution is, okay, if I if all these happening, if all of these things are happening because I broke his commandments, okay, the solution is I need to start keeping his commandments. And that's the problem. Because all these years we've been marching. We've been going to politics, we've been going to, to Christianity, we've been going to Islam, some of our people do Buddhism, uh, Egyptology, we're doing all this stuff and the conditions of our community are still the same. That lets us know that that stuff ain't working. It ain't the solution. Read that. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Uh -huh. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things. And keep the ordinances I, as I delivered to them to you. So Paul saying, hey, follow me as I follow the Most High. I taught you the law. I taught you his laws. Continue in them. Read. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of every woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So this is the family structure. The man is the head of the house. Yeah. The man is the patriarch. There's no, it's not supposed to be no big ma and no family because the big, you say big ma and everybody go to big ma and granddad sitting in the corner somewhere saying, hey, she the boss. No, that's the wrong structure and order of the house. It's man, it's God, Christ, man, 
being a woman. And a well, woman rears up the children until they get of age. Huh? Our families had to make a lot of decisions on that part of it. Because every man wasn't a man of the house. You know, what I'm saying is that he was dominating, but let me go on. I mean, I understand what you're saying. That's Molestation to his daughters. And those, those are a lot of things that, that our people did. That's, a, that's what I'm saying. To that's hurt a, us. And those are, those are all things that are against the commandments of God. That's right. So that's what us returning to it. When it says the order is God, Christ, man, mm -hmm. this means that this man is following Christ. Mm -hmm. If this man is following Christ, he's not going to molest his children. But if he's not following Christ, and lots of black men were not following Christ at all. Right. You know Mostly it was Big Mama taking us to church. You know what I'm but, saying? And, and that's the thing. She was, and, 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 and it might have been wrong, but she had to do what she had to do for her family, yeah, and she that. probably read the Bible. And we understand, we understand that, because that's that's part of the curse. That's part of us that's being right. destroyed as a people. Yeah. Because if you ever, I don't know if you ever heard of the Willie Lynch letter. That's what happened. Things yeah. were turned upside down. The man, because a lot of the, the a lot of things that you're speaking about with the man being molesting his children, and the man being weak minded. A lot of that happened throughout slavery, because you look at the movie Roots. Kunta Kinte, that was a man. He was a man's man. But what they do to him, they beat him down to a pulp in front of everybody. So what they did was they changed the psyche of the man. All of these strong men seen the strongest man get beat down to a pulp and change his name. They like, you know what? I ain't gonna do that. And then the women, they raised their sons to say, don't don't fight against the white man. I don't want you to die. But do but be strong and do the work. Be strong and go on that slave plantation and work as hard as you can. So what happened over the course of time? The men became weak in the mind, but they were still physically strong to get the work done. So then just duplicate that over the time. Now the woman is the head of the house. Because the woman is gonna do what she gotta do to protect her children so they don't get put to death. But in doing that, that reversed the family structure. And just over time, that's what happened. So now the men, we got broke, that's a broken family. That's a broken family. So when a, bro a broken, if a family is broken, there's gonna be all type of foolishness to come out of that. The son, the men gonna grow up, they're gonna be liking babies and children, and they're not, they, they, that's, that's unseen. That's not, that's not, that's against the Bible. So that's what we end, but we have to, we have to return them to the most high God because that man that was a, that may have been a child molester, if he under if he learned that damn that was wrong and he re, he repent and learn the laws and stop doing that, you didn't you didn't just strengthen the man and made made that man back put that man back in order the way he's supposed to be. Because that's what all of these curses happen. All of these things, all of the things that happen happened because we broke God's commandment. That's a broken family structure with the mama leading the way. And we understand that most mothers, because the mother love, her, the mother is a nurse. The mother loves her children. She wants the best for them. So she did the best that she could with what she knew at that time. Exactly. But what we know and what we're learning now is that was wrong. That wasn't supposed to be like that. And the only reason it was like that is because we was in captivity. And that's how our oppressors flipped it. Because they know if the man was in the forefront of the house, it was going to be a lot of stuff that they couldn't do. Because the man would stop it. The man, just like Ken, just like Kunta Kinte fought to, uh, he fought to almost a day till they beat him till he couldn't even stand. And then he said, totally. So they broke, the, the, that's the thing, they broke down the men. The men, yeah, they broke our spirit. They broke the man's spirit. So they broke the man's spirit. The woman feared for her son, so she raised her son to be subservient, to be uh, passive. And of course, over time, you had men that rose up that said, no, nah, I ain't being passive. I'm taking over. Right. But as a nation, the women leading the way. Yeah. And that's backwards. 
that's not how it's but, supposed to be know, because a woman can't lead did, the way. Another thing that they did back in the day is they made sure that the woman stayed, I mean, the uh, man stayed in his place because guess what? They stayed out the house. If you, you couldn't even get no food for your exactly. family, you couldn't get no money for your family right. if he was there. Right, and that's, that's more demasculating the man. Because imagine that. Because even today, even today, yeah. some men leave. Um, and I, I'm gonna use my situation. When my mother and father separated or got divorced, my father had a good job. He was working, I think, at the time it was called AT and T Bell or something like that. Mm -hmm. He had a, a very good pension. Mm -hmm. But and I learned this in the later years, child support will take everything a man has. It happened with one of my friends, he had a barber license. They told him if he didn't pay child support, they were gonna take his barber license. Yeah. What sense does that make? If I don't have a barber license, I can't even make the money to pay, to take care of my children. So he would leave the family. So what happened, we, and this happens, this happens amongst a lot of us. Yeah. What happened, the man be like, you already, okay, I make a thousand a week. You taking eight hundred? I can't live off two hundred. Forget it. I'm gonna quit my job, and I'm going somewhere else. And now I'm what? I'm on the street selling drugs. Yeah. I'm I'm working in the car wash. I'm getting paid under the table. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting paid now where I can get paid, and you're not taking my livelihood. Mm -hmm. So that is just a destructive cycle, mm -hmm. and that's what goes on. But that all of that is happening. The whole problem is that we broke God's commandments, mm -hmm. and the solution is that we return back to the commandments. But let's finish this real quick. Uh, no, nah, three. Three. Well, four. Four next four. verse. Yeah, bro. Verse four. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. So this in relation to that headship, this is a law. Because the things that Paul wrote were the laws of God. So it said, any man that's praying or prophesying, read. Having his head covered, dishonoring his head. So if a man is learning the scriptures, teaching the scriptures, praying, Anything of that add matter because the prophecy is the Bible. It says if his head is covered, he's dishonoring Christ. If he's breaking the command, if his head is covered, yeah, if his head is covered, read. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered. So, in the flip side, if a woman is dealing in the scriptures, whether she's getting understanding, she's teaching her children, she's praying, it says what? Dishonoreth her head. She dishonors her head, which is the man. Oh, okay. Oh, so she's not supposed to be teaching. With her head uncovered. The woman's head is supposed to be covered. Okay. The man's head is supposed to be uncovered. Because man, I mean, you go on in the chapter, I'm going to paraphrase it. When you go on in the chapter, it says, because man was made in the image of God, and the woman was made after the image of the man. So that's the, that's the structure. So as a man, uh, I think Curtis, if you have a hat on, right now you would be in transgression of this commandment because the scriptures, the Bible, the understanding of the Bible is coming out and you have your head covered. So that would be a breaking of the commandment. Go to uh, Leviticus chapter 21 and 5. I'm going to do two more. Or three more. Or two more after this. Leviticus, the book of Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon thy, their heads. As the men, we're not supposed to shave our heads bald. That's a commandment of God. Because yes. that's a custom. Exactly. We're not supposed to shave our heads bald. Because that's a custom of, at this time when the law was given to us, that was a custom of the Egyptians. They shaved all the hair off their body. They shaved the eyebrows. They shaved everything. Yeah, they did. So when the Most High delivered us, he was... He was telling me, he told us, don't shave your, the hair off your head, read. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Neither shall we shave off the corner of our beard. As men, we're supposed to let our beards grow. Just like a lion, when a lion is a lot cub, and it grows up, it has a mane. The men, why grow, why grow your, you get the ability to grow a beard, then you shave it all off. When you become a man, because your, your beard is, is part of your manhood. Yeah, we can look at it and yeah, it's a physical thing, but your beard is a part of you being a man. Oh. But if you're shaving it, you're saying, I don't want to be a man. I want to be a boy. 
That's basically what you're saying. So as men, the one of the laws we have to return to is not shaving our head bald and letting our beard grow. No matter if you got patches, if you got a little bit of beard, you gotta let it grow. Go ahead. Excuse me, I kind of put this together. Uh -huh. You telling me that no ball, it was ball head in at what? If their hair is going back, all from here back there, and I have to shave because I want to look, or you know, rinky dick. Well, being a man is the reason I choose to to cut my hair because I don't want to be looking like a clown where I look so that's all the way back my hair. So what what what's, right. what's the it, difference? It, uh, 1340. You understand what I'm saying? But I understand what you're saying. Okay. But the thing about it is, who put that image in our mind that if you go forehead bald that you look like a clown? When they start falling out. I'm saying when your hair like it fell hair, out. You know what I'm saying your hair naturally fell out, but you, you probably had hair on the side. Yes, sir. So the, the, the question I asked is, who said that that makes you look like a clown? For me, that, that, I, okay. I don't want to look. Like a clown. Well, who put that? You that's didn't, what I choose. But I'm saying that's not something, I can guarantee that that's not something that you just developed just out of your own mind. It had to be something you possibly seen coming up where people were getting talked about when their hair go bald. And because of that, when you grew up, you're like, man, if I lose, if I lose my hair, I'm going to shave it all off. But that's a concept that was pushed out there to make it look like a negative. When actually, if you go forehead ball, it's not a negative thing. You just go forehead ball. But in addition to that, another solution is, okay, I don't want to look, I don't want to have my hair growing and it's bald in the middle. Uh -huh. You can cut it low. You can still cut it low to your head, but don't shave it bald. The law is don't shave it bald. But if you let, if you take a, what, a number one, Number one half, blade on the clipper, half, half, and you cut it, huh? Or half, a buzz one, cut, yeah. A buzz cut, where you you still have a little hair on your head. You cut it real low, but you still have hair on your head. Because the, the 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 sin is when you take a razor and you shave all the you shave it completely bald. That's the sin. But read that. That's the book of Leviticus, chapter thirteen and twenty nine, verse forty. And the man whose hair is falling off his head. So it he, says, the man whose hair is falling off his head, read. He is bald. He's bald. He's going forehead bald. Uh, read. Yet is he clean. It says, yet is he clean. The Bible defines that as, okay, your hair, you lost your hair? That's good. You're good. But don't shave it. Don't steal. Don't shave what you can grow. Don't shave it bald. Just like a man, I think all of us in here got a full will. He ain't got a full will. kind of. Just like a man, some men can't grow a full beard. Some men grow just the, they just grow the, uh, what would they call it, the goatee? Okay. Some men just grow the goatee. Okay, your goatee, yeah. keep it, let it grow. If you got little strings of hair, don't cut it off. Just let it hang. You have to let it grow because the Bible says it's a law. It's not us speaking, it's what God said. Go ahead. Is this the King's English or I mean uh, this the, is King James. Is the King James version? Yeah, it's the King James. Okay. Because I've studied the, the Bible, but I didn't realize that hair, what he was talking about, uh, when, well, anyway, we're making hair and cutting it off. Right. Is a sin? Is that a sin, sir? Yes, that's a sin. Okay, I got it. And that's the, and the thing about it, um, the thing about it is the reason because I, I I used to I read before I had the understanding now I read the Bible I was going to Christian church and until somebody showed me I didn't know that I was supposed to keep my beard I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to shave it off but that's because those that are teaching us are not teaching us God's laws they're teaching us that the Old Testament that we don't have to keep those laws. So that's why most of us growing up, we didn't hear these things because it wasn't taught because no emphasis was put on it because we were being taught that we didn't have to keep it. So with that, that 
that whole frame of thinking that, oh, if my head started going bald in the middle, I'm gonna look like a clown, so I gotta shave it all off. That's where that thought came because it was ridiculed. It was ridiculed in the widespread, so most men, when they start going forehead bald, they shave it off because they like they wanted to look uniform and everything to look clean. But who told us that a clean look was your head bald and your face, your, 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 your face shaved off? That's not a clean look, according to God. That's an unclean look. Let's read that again. And the man whose hair is falling off his head, he is bald. Mm -hmm. Yet is he clean. So you're clean if, if it falls out, like even if your all your hair falls out, you're completely bald. You're clean as long as you didn't take a razor to your head. Same thing as you go forehead bald. If you didn't take a razor to your head, I don't think nobody would do that anyway. But if you didn't take a razor to your head and just shave off the, the middle part of your head, you're clean because it fell out naturally. The sin is when you take a razor to it. Um, now get First Timothy two and that. Wrap up. This is the now book of two more scriptures. In there. This is the book of First Timothy chapter two <clears throat> verse nine. So those are the laws for the men. Now we're going to deal with a couple laws for women. Read. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So this is one. The the it says that women are to adorn themselves in modest apparel. What would what would be considered modest apparel? A long skirt, you have your the breast covered in. up. Right. So when, when, it's, when the Bible says modest the pyramid, I mean, and the woman's body is covered up. She's not showing her legs. She's not showing the figure of her legs. She's covered up. She's completely covered. So that, does that mean that she can wear pants? Nope. See, that ain't being specific, though. We're going to go we're gonna get more specific because pants. What are pants for? To hide your legs. A skirt won't hide your legs. Depending on who you are. Because like like right now, those are those are not pants, those are leggings. These but, are pants. But right now looking if I look at you, I can see the figure your shape. Oh, I can see okay. your shape. Oh, okay. So that's what makes it immodest. Oh, because I can see your oh, shape. Okay. When you wear pants, I can see your shape. And the only person that's supposed to see your shape is who? Yeah. Exactly. Anything outside of that goes outside of the confines of the Bible. So it says a woman's supposed to adorn herself in modest apparel. What he said was was perfect. A, so a dress. So it's okay if I wear blue a, jeans. Not even jeans. Blue doesn't Get now get. When I started here. I'm let's go to Deuteronomy twenty-two and five. There's a book of <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter twenty-two verse five. Cause how, how old are you, you mommy? Yes. Huh? I said how old are you, you mommy? Yes. I'm. <laughs> 70 in November the 24th. 70, oh, so you were... Thank you. You were born in what, 49? I was born in 53. 53. Mm -hmm. How old are you, sir? Me? Yeah. Uh, 69. 69, so around the same time, 56. 54. 54. 67. 67. Yes, sir. You were born in 67 when you were 67. Pardon me? Your age is 67? Yes, sir. 54. So, I'll ask y'all this. When y'all were nine, <laughs> ten, did your grandmothers wear dresses or, or pants? They wore dresses. They wore dresses every day. All of, they all did. Grandmothers. They wore dresses. 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 Now, did they wear dresses? When it was cold outside, they put on pants because it was too cold? To go. Nope. Did they have snow pants on? Oh, uh, they had a dress My on. My grandmother. Yeah, they had a dress on top because when she was Catholic and when she went to church, she would take the snow pants off and she still have her dress on. Right. So but the, she the would snow, have pants on. The snow her pants dress. were what, was what they would call uh, like the leggings is an undergarment. No, no, those no, are no, undergarments. They were like your pants. No, you know I'm saying, but they were those were pants. No, oh, they were big. But look, but this, this, this is the thing. You all are at an age where you've seen your grandparents, your grandmother. Specifically, what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. She didn't wear pants. No, no. Well, she wore, she pants wore, dre like they wore dresses. Dress. Keep them warm. Right. Keep them warm. But and that's but the, that was on the as, a, as an outer they garment. As an outer garment, they wore dresses. They wore dresses. 
They didn't wear pants. Pants came around during the women's women liberation movement. <laughs> when the woman. white woman, not even a black woman, the white woman was trying to get equal rights with the white man. And then the woman who was once fighting for freedom with, with the black panthers, the black woman we was integrated pants. with we the blue integrated blue. with the, the black woman integrated with the white woman. Mm -hmm. But let's read this. I, I said that I just want the preface to read this. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Uh -huh. <laughs> Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So starting from the end, what's a woman's garment? A dress. Okay, so it says the Bible. Skirt. So a man shouldn't put on a woman's garment. No. Nope. Because let me ask you, I'm just going to ask you this. If I was up here with a dress going through the Bible, would you take me serious? Nope. No. Just, that's just like the men with them long braids in there. Now, there's nothing wrong with no, having no, braids. No. There's nothing wrong with having braids. Now, if you're wearing your hair like a woman, that's where it becomes a problem. <laughs> if you're wearing your braids or your dreads like a woman, then there's an issue. You look cute. You're feminist. <laughs> 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 I'm reading it again from the top of the way. Oh, no, no, no. Really? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So it says, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So, so it says, the woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. What is it that women wear that pertains to men? I know. It's cold in Chicago, baby. We have to have. Well, what happened to the snow pants with the dress? Well, I still have snow pants. But that's the thing. So, we'll do, let's read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. <laughs> what is it that women wear that pertains they to a man? They don't want us to wear pants at all. They want us to no, freeze. No, it's not they. This is God. No. I know, but he want us to freeze. I'm married. He's married. They're married. Mm -hmm. Our wives wear dresses all year round. That's good. Even in the winter. That's good. And they stay warm. Yeah, right. So it's not the dress that's going to make you, you cold. You're going to tell well, what's going to go on, what's going to keep a warm man out when they go out you, in the street. Your undergarment. Okay. Underwear. Underwear. Oh, Because what you got on right now, those are nothing but long underwear. Oh, well. Go ahead. Keep me warm. Well, my, my grandma <laughs> called us just not easy. That's what they used to do. Not years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Until uh, I went to German, uh, Korea, I was cold on the on the gate, and uh -huh. uh, my grandma told me put some tights on, keep warm. Tights, uh, that's right. And then and, and I'm warm, and I they was when I put them on, some of the guys was talking about why are you putting them things, and you're laugh, ha ha ha. And then over the months, the weather had changed greatly in German, uh, Korea. Everybody in the, on the, uh, the the MPs had the things on stay warm on the gate, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, that's how things have changed right over the years. But the thing about it, things have changed. Things have changed things. But the Bible ain't changed. The Bible still has the same thing. That's why it says the woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man, which is pants. So as a woman, you shouldn't have jeans. Where you you shouldn't be wearing jeans because the Bible says so. Yeah. Because that pertains to men. Just and hence the saying, who wear the pants in this house? If the woman <laughs> wearing pants, if the woman wearing pants, that means she fighting for she the authority. Knows, huh? She fighting for the authority in the house. Oh. And that goes out of order with the most high God. And that's the pro that's that's part of the problem. That's why the things that we went through, mm -hmm. that's why our nation is Jacked I up I because things are turned I upside down. Get I, I, this is the last scripture. But y'all need to come. Isaiah three you and sixteen. Come to where I be at with, with, with my woman's friend, and y'all better tell them that. Cause see, we lying down. You trying to get us stoned, huh? <laughs> 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 but we we'll come. Hey, we'll come. 63rd, 63rd, Let us know where it's at, and we'll come. Where is it? Where is that? Sixty-third. Um, prepared to get stoned. Post right up, you know, right behind King the King College. Yeah, we prepared. Yeah. It's we senior prepared. Senior cipher. It's a senior cipher. We prepared. Yeah. Well, let us know. Like that. They uh, love us. Let us know where it's at, and we'll try to set something okay, up. Okay. Go in there. Sure we ready? I'll read that real quick. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 16. Moreover, the Lord saith, 
Because the daughters of daughters of Zion are haughty. It says the daughters of Zion are haughty. Now our women wearing pants, they think they run the house. Boss. They think they the boss. They yeah. haughty. When the thing is, and and there's, and I know, like I said, I'm gonna preface this. With, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna preface what I'm about to say <laughs> with this. Most, a lot of our women, they did the best that they can, and we understand that the mothers, they did the best that they can. Mm -hmm. But even though they did the best that they can, a lot of our young men that's running the streets and shooting and killing and murdering is because they were raised in a household with a single mother, mm -hmm. because. A, sick, a mother, no matter how hard she try, no matter what all she do with all her heart, the only thing that she's going to be able to transfer to a young man is her emotions. Unless she's completely sound in mind and she you know, understands and follows the commandments fully, all she's going to, and even then, what she's going to teach that young man, what he's going to pick up from her, is emotions. And that's what, that's what causes. That's why a lot of our young men are out here gang banging and shooting and killing. Because they get mad at somebody and they go get a gun and shoot. That's emotional. That's an emotional response. That's somebody that doesn't have control over their emotions. Because men have emotions. But as men, we're supposed to be able to control our emotions and make the right decision whether we feel whether our emotions are, is at is a height or if our emotions is at a low. We're supposed to be uh, the man is wired to be able to control that emotional. Uh, the emotional impulse. Whereas a woman, like the scriptures say in First Peter, a woman is a weaker vessel. So a woman is emotionally, her decision, her, her logic is more emotional. So even if she tries hard, her emotions are going to oftentimes lead the way. And that's where the difference is. That's where the households, that's why we, that's why as a nation, we got to, the men got to stand up and get back in the my house dad, and raise these young men how they're supposed to yeah, be raised. My, my mother was more emotional than my father. She took care of the household. My dad worked and he took care of us. He actually talked to us and let us know what right. was really going on, you right. know, in this world. Right. And it, meant yeah. a, it, it was different. But that's, that, okay. that, that's good. It has, it's supposed to be, a, when you raise the children, it's supposed to be an active father and an act of mother, because it's a, the father is more principle driven. He's exactly. more he's he's more of the the discipline, and the woman is the nurturer. But it's a it's a and healthy balance. We have our different roles. Yeah. The man has his role, mm -hmm. and the woman has her role. Yeah. But when you reverse that, you take the if you take the father out, that yeah. child is gonna grow up emotionally damaged. Yeah. If you take the mother out. That father, that, that child is still gonna grow up emotionally damaged. That's the the woman has a role to play in raising the children, and the father has a role to play and to play in, in raising the children. If you take any one of those components out, that structure, that that household is gonna be toxic. Mm -hmm. Even if that father is in the house but not actually active, like you said, your father was active. He was he talked. If the father is in the house but inactive. It's gonna be the same result. Same thing with the mother. The mother's in the house and she's inactive. It's gonna be the same results. Or right, finish that. Let's finish that real quick. And walk with stretched forth neck and wuton eyes. See now, and then read it again. Read it right. Read it clear. Wanton eyes. So I want. So and I know you say you already know you Israel. You, I think you're hearing some of this stuff new. I know you were here last time, so some of this stuff you may have heard from the last time too. But just, just as we read this, just think about our, women, our, our, our sisters today, how they walk the streets, how they act, their behavior. Read that, and this is how you know that this Bible is oh, it's, it's about us. It's this about is our us. Bible. Read and walk with stretch. Now read from the top. More what the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are hardy, and walk with stretch forth necks. And wanton eyes. It says that the, the, the daughters of Zion are haughty, meaning they're prideful. They got a big mouth. I want to say something else. <laughs> but they got a big mouth. And it says they walk with stretched forth necks. Yep. yep. And wanton eyes. What that means? Wanton eyes is like eyes, the eyes of a whore. I, that's the easiest way I can say it. That's the plainest I can say it. Wanton eyes is like lustful. Like seducing. 
Read. And mincing as they go. And mincing as they go. How do I describe it? Mincing. What's the, how, how, how can I say it? Um, switching. Switching. Oh, oh, switching. Switching. Oh, switching. Oh, switching. Oh. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> that exactly. Read. And make a tinkling with their feet. And make a tinkling with their feet. Tinkling? What's yeah. that? Bracelets. Like bracelets, that? bracelets, the jewelry, high heels. Oh. <laughs> Clip clack like the, the high heels and then you hit when you hit the floor. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't I'm not I'm not this, I'm not being an example. Oh, I'm not doing that. That. Read. <laughs> Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. And it says the Lord will smite with the head, the crown of the head, the daughters of Zion. Did we read it again? Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab. Is he say well, he will smite with the scab? Okay. Uh -huh. The crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. And a lot of our sisters, a lot of people can say, oh, it's because of the perm, but a lot of our sisters, their hair don't grow. They they bought, they couldn't weave in their head and all of that. Their hair don't grow. And it, it could be because they permed it and burned it, and that don't grow no more. But this Bible prophecy, everything that we just read is the black woman today. Oh, good. In the streets. Yeah, you're right. And this is the Bible. We're reading out the Bible. Right. Everything we just read is a black woman. Mm -hmm. And I say, when I say black woman, I'm talking about the black, Hispanic, and Native woman. Because that's this is what this is. When you read that, read it again. Just just to just to make it stick a little bit more. Read it again. Therefore, the Lord will smite. No, nah, the the, the, the okay. previous verse. Okay. <clears throat> Sixteen. Okay. Uh, moreover, the Lord with the Lord with, because the daughters of daughters of Zion and are hardy. The daughters of Zion are hardy, hardy, prideful. Can't tell them nothing. They always in a man's face telling me ain't ish. Read. And walk with stretch forth necks. Walk with stretch forth necks. Man, they head held high. You can't tell them nothing. You tell them something, they bound to cut you. Or punch you. Push you. Who you, who you think you talking to? Read. And wanton eyes. And wanton eyes. They horrors. Sexy red. These new new rap artists. Sexy red and uh. Sukiyama. Sukiyama. <laughs> Cardi B. That's wanton eyes. And where they move their head. Where they move their head. Read. <clears throat> and the mincing. And mincing. As they go. And mincing <coughs> as they go. That's that that walk. That str so called strut. Mm. Read. And making a tinkling with their feet. The, the, the ankle jewelry, all of that. Read. And the, the, the heel hitting the pavement. <laughs> Read. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. So this is this is the Bible. And it's what we're reading is this is not that's not the verse I actually wanted, but what we're reading. This is this is us. So this Bible is our book. So that's the okay. the gist of the presentation. Um, it's showing that the Bible is our history book. And the only way we're gonna fix the problem within our community is if we return to the Bible and keep the commandments that God gave to us. What is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 